and you're live on the marketplace here's what's coming up in the next half hour the public interest and accountability committee piac kicks against the use of annual budgeting funding amounts in filing expenditure gaps we'll hear from the chairman of the committee professor kwame edum from bomb also government expects recommendations from technical committee on the minimum wage in two weeks time we'll tell you more as the first tripartite committee to determine the minimum wage for the year begins View and then uh, bring their submit their report to us. Then we'll meet again as a constituent body and consider the report of the technical committee. So that is exactly what we have done today. We have agreed. Plus, our small and medium sized enterprises recruiting well as demand for labor increases amid easing of COVID restrictions. Well, the chief executive of leading recruitment agency in Ghana, Jobberman, joins us for a labor focused discussion if you're an employer or a job seeker you don't want to miss out on this insightful conversation we have all these and more coming up shortly in this bullets and do stay Hello and welcome. Now, the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, is kicking against the use of the annual budgeting funding amount in filing expenditure gaps in times of revenue shortfalls in the budget. According to PIAC, the practice is rather the purpose of the Ghana Step Stabilization Fund. As part of its recommendations of the 2020 annual report, it reiterated the need for a long term national development plan, as stipulated in Section 221 of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act to guide the spending of petroleum revenues instead of resorting to the fallback position of ministerial discretion in the selection of priority areas. We have more on this in this report. As detailed in the 2019 annual report, the committee also reiterated that the annual budgeting funding amount should not be spread thinly in accordance with Section 21 of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act. Also, it urged the Ghana Revenue Authority to as a matter of urgency initiate action to recover surface rental areas of a little above $2 million with the appropriate interest rate. 18 companies that are exploring oil are currently indebted to the country. Professor Kwame Adum Frimpon is the chairman of PIAC and has been highlighting the key findings. 2019, the areas was 1,566,463. One billion five hundred sixty-three thousand one million sorry five hundred and sixty three thousand four hundred and sixty three. The non payment of this stream of income denies petroleum holding fund, the necessary fund for developmental projects. Then number two, GMPC utilized a makeup guard volume of one thousand eight hundred and sixty seven point Five million out of the total accumulated makeup gas volume of thirty-five thousand six hundred and thirty point three two million, Ghana Revenue Authority should, as a matter of agency, initiate action to recover surface rental areas with the appropriate interest, as provided in the PRMA. Number two, the Ministry of Finance should ensure that priority areas selected are approved by Parliament before implementation as required by Section 21.5 of the PRMA. Number three, the ABFA should not be used to serve the purpose of filling expenditure gaps in times of revenue shortfall in the budget that is the, as this is the purpose of the Ghana Stabilization Fund under Section 92 of the PRMA. Professor Adam Frimpon told Joy Business, though he wasn't satisfied about the utilization of petroleum funds in 2020, it was better than previous years. Comparatively, it's not bad. In fact, if you look at our findings, they are not as many as the previous years. Uh, the one thing also added is that the priority areas, as we stated, have been clearly stated in the law that the, these 12 priority areas, if the government wants to take, uh, has the ability to take four. So these four is what they can concentrate, but the four should be approved by parliament. 
So any priority area that the government wants to embark on needs approval of the parliament. But you didn't see it in the 2020 budget. Uh, Minister of Finance was saying that th those things have been ratified in 2021. But you know this one is for 2020. That's why we are drawing the government attention. And it's our, one of our main functions to bring it to the attention of the government that this is what is supposed to be and this is how it should be done. And this is the right thing we have done. The report is the 10th since oil production began in 2010. Ghana has so far recorded $6.5 billion from oil production. Since its establishment in September 2011, PIAC has exercised its oversight responsibility of monitoring and evaluating the management of Ghana's petroleum resources by government and stakeholders. You're still watching the marketplace. Let's now delve into some labor-related uh, matters because the Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Ignatius Bafuiwa, has hinted that the tripartite committee has agreed to receive recommendations in determining the national minimum wage for this year. This is expected in two weeks' time, following an agreement between the government and organized labor. According to the minister, the 15-member committee is expected to consider some economic factors in determining the national daily minimum wage. He spoke to the media after the first meeting with the National Tripartite Committee in Accra. It behoves on us to also make sure that workers are well catered for um, whenever we are determining this. Of course, government at this stage is, is also a key uh, uh, interested person because in Ghana, government is also a major employer. Besides that, we are also a regulator. So we also have a role to play in this. So we met today, and then um, the process is that normally at our first meetings, we are not able to determine the minimum wage. It's not that we disagree, but the process is that we meet and then set the process. And the process is that normally after this meeting, we put in place a technical committee, which will, 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 will consider all happenings within the economy, um, things like inflation, things like uh, uh, the rate of growth of the economy and what have you, and then uh, uh, bring their, submit their report to us. Then we'll meet again as a constituent body and consider the report of the technical committee. So that is exactly what we have done today. We have agreed that the technical committee should submit its report within two weeks' time, after which uh, another National Tripartite Committee will be convened to um, look at their report. Their report is usually not taken as a final product. It is also negotiated. So um, I just want you, perhaps um, as, as the mouthpiece of the public, to know so that uh, when you are turning out something, you, you know the process and then you let them know exactly what the expectations should be. And that was the Employment Minister, Ignatius Balfour, also the General Secretary of the Ghana Traders Trade Union Congress, as the TUC Dr. Yalba believes that the recommendations will be favorable to all parties. Yes. And I have nothing more to say than what the Minister <laughs> said. Uh, it is a consultative process, as he has just said, and is determined by the tripartite partners. The chairman is the minister he has spoken to you the employer's president and then the TUC secretary general representing organized labor. Now, we have agreed that two weeks from now, the technical committee will have to submit its report to the chairman, who is the minister for employment. As soon as he receives the report, he has assured us that he's going to reconvene the National Tripartite Committee meeting. Then the process of negotiation starts. So we are hoping that the technical committee will bring their report as, as uh, expected, and then once that is done, the process starts. And as the minister has showed you, once we are done and we have concluded the negotiation, uh, we will have another press conference, and there uh, we can talk a bit more about many other things. Some are proposing even more, but that's why we need the technical work to be done. I don't want to preempt what they are going to do. It is, it is very sad that this COVID thing has come to disrupt everything. We should have determined minimum wage for 2021 in 2020. But by law, by April ending, we should finish. But we did it. We met somewhere in September, October and said, let's wait. Because that was the time some employers were sacking some workers. That was the time they were reducing salaries. 
and that was not a time to negotiate. Because if you negotiate during that time, you won't get anything. It looks like gradually we are recovering, but it's, it's very gradual, and we are hoping that this time, the employers and government and organized labor will reach a deal which will make all of us satisfied. So I do not want to preempt what the technical committee is going to do. Let's wait for their report, and there, there will be more time, inshallah, to discuss this. Now, COVID-19 restrictions have eased and with it comes a new demand for workers as companies open up for business. But there is a challenge here. Statistics from the Ghana Statistical Service show that 80% of SMEs are not recruiting the right way. Now, what this means is that even as the demand for labor increases, the quality of labor remains a challenge. Now, Jorman, the largest online recruitment agency in West Africa, has dealt with this challenge by introducing an employer-focused drive to encourage the best hiring practices in the online human resource and recruitment ecosystem. And we will be having the Chief Executive Officer of the leading uh, recruitment agency in Ghana, Jobberman Kweku Agbisi, join us. He's already here in the studio. But as you can see on the screen, the top four digital recruitment challenges that so many recruiters are facing, not just in Ghana, but around the world. Too many irrelevant or underqualified applicants, the lack of local content, overwhelmed applications, fraudsters and third-party agents. These remain the stark challenges regarding digital recruitment in the country and around the world. Well, thankfully, we're joined by the CEO, Jobberman, and he's here to help us understand the initiative in nibbing this development to the bad. Because we're so grateful that you joined us okay. on the marketplace. First of all, how endemic mm -hmm. is this issue about poor recruitment you know, services from the, from the point of view of employers within the SME sector? Yeah, so it's... Thank you. Thank you once again for having me on this program. Mm. It's, it's quite a, a prevalent problem for the SMEs. Um, and one thing we've done based, based on the research we've carried out is a lot of SMEs are not recruiting the right way, and that is why they are facing these challenges. So what we have done at Jobberman over the past eight years or so since our existence in Ghana is to put in the mechanisms to ensure that these SMEs are well equipped to get the right people in their companies. Mm. Because you agree with me, Charles, that every company needs the right people to be able to you know, function. You exactly. can have you know, the best technology in the world, you can have the, uh, the latest state of the art devices, but if you do not have the right people, those people, you know, it will not drive your company forward. So, but how are they not recruiting the proper way? Well, it's as simple as not using, uh, not using Jobman as a company to, to do their recruitment for them. Mm. So one of the things that we pride ourselves in as a company is, and that is what separates us from a lot of our competitors, is we rely a lot of in te on technology to hire the right people for companies. So think about you know, an application coming through to you as, a, as an SME. Okay, the best way that what you think about is, okay, people have said so many things on their CV which look good, but mm -hmm. you know, you, re you recruit the person and then two or three months down the line, you realize that, oh, actually, the person has really, um, you know, uh, has put a lot of superfluous information on mm -hmm. their CV, so they are not the right people for the roles. Mm -hmm. So what we do as Jobberman is, we use technology, as I said, to assess the right people or the candidates to make sure that they are the right fit. So as we say in Jumbo, we want to put, we want to make sure that we don't put square pegs in round holes. So exactly, that is for me the uh, the main you know defining factor, or that is what you know delineates us from our competitors. Mm. And in dealing with this issue, you have come up with the hire the right way campaign. If you could walk us through the remit of this particular campaign. Sure, sure. So as as you rightly said, I mean. SMEs form, some, form the bedrock of our economy, okay? And we want to ensure that they have the right people in order to be able to, um, to, uh, to grow their businesses. So the Hire the Right Way is really um, a campaign which is aimed at these SMEs, okay? And what we are trying to say to them is, look, we, Jobberman, should be your, you know, your choice when it mm. comes to recruiting the right people because, one, we are re reliable. Uh, we are, you know, we've got um, a system which is quite easy to use. And third, and for me, most importantly, is the transparent way that we go about in uh, you know, going about our, our recruitment business. What we don't want, or what we do, because we use technology a lot, we don't get situations where uh, we are biased in, in the way we assess our candidates. Mm. So every candidate is assessed based on their merit, based on their knowledge and capabilities. And we as, what we want to make sure is, once you have the right people in place, those people will help you to drive your business going forward. So ultimately, um, Hiring the right people really is the bedrock of the growth of your business. And for me, I think it's really more important 
One thing I find interesting about a lot of these companies is a lot of people, you know, focus more on technology and the latest devices. Mm -hmm. But you need to, write, need to have the right people in order to drive exactly. that. And that is, what that is what we are here for as mm -hmm. Job One, to but, help you get those people. Great. But, you know, it's, it's very interesting that you centered on the private sector, the SMEs as well, because we're also having this, this conversation in the back of the stack challenges regarding human resource in the public sector. Have you engaged authorities within this line? Because yes. this campaign, if you know, introducing the public sector could also reduce this issue about the round, you know, pecs and, you know, square holes. Yes. No, you're right. And to be honest, we are in uh, negotiations or we've actually started recruiting for uh, a public sector agency. Okay. Um, I, obviously, for uh, confidential reasons, I can't give the name of that agency mm. at the moment. But that's something that we are starting. And this is the first public sector agency that we, we're recruiting for. And we're hoping that you know, with the quality of service that we, we do for them, we will be able to replicate that with other agencies as well. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I think the whole, the most important thing is we want to make sure that our recruitment is, first of all, very transparent. We don't want situations where people are recruited just by virtue of the fact that they know, you know, the director of the company or they know they have a relative in the company because that is where the challenge has always been in the past. So for us, the most important thing is getting the right people in the right jobs in order to increase productivity of the companies that we are recruiting. Mm, help us with some trends here, because sure. now we've seen uh, restrictions eased around the country and even specific African nations of where, of, of, from which you operate as well. That's right. Help us understand the trends of recruitment and job offers during pre-COVID, COVID and post-COVID times. Okay, so yeah, you, you're right. Pre-COVID, we noticed that there was actually a reduction and we noticed quite a, a huge spike in the okay. number of job seekers on our platform. Um, so for Jobman as a company, we have approximately 550,000 mm. job seekers. And w under that period, we realized that there was a reduction in the number of people that we placed in, uh, in gainful employment as well. Okay. So pre-COVID, I would say, you know, the number of orders or the number of um, requests that we got from customers probably dropped about 60 or 70 percent mm -hmm. okay but post well during the COVID period and post COVID now we realize that you know companies are hiring again which shows that there is um, there's a lot of confidence in the Ghanaian economy and people are looking to uh, to recruit maybe people they may have lost during the pandemic mm. finally before uh, we let you go where do you see the prospects of you know online recruitment in Ghana and around around the sub region um, personally I think it's, it's going to grow from strength to strength because obviously as time goes on people realize that you know using technology in a recruitment process ultimately will get you the right candidates because these candidates are assessed based on their merits and not based on you know affiliations with people that are already working in the existing company that they want to work for. So for me, I think it's the way to go, and I'll urge all SMEs to embrace this uh, this new development. Thank you very much. I think we could cross over to Sheriff Gali. He's the uh, the chief executive of the Ghana Chamber of Entrepreneurs, and this relates so much to entrepreneurs around the country as well. Matters regarding recruitment amid COVID nineteen. So Sheriff, how do you respond to this whole initiative of having to recruit? the right way as an SME and the umbrella of entrepreneurs around the country. All right, thank you very much. And thanks to Jopperman um, for the good work done. Yes, it's, it's, it's obvious. Um, the issue of recruiting right has, has always been there with SMEs. And now we are talking of the digital recruitment, or online recruitment, which is mostly a new thing to the SMEs here in Ghana. Like he said, SME from the bedrock of um, entrepreneurship or our economy mm. and about 75 percent out of the 85 are all local businesses that do not necessarily um, use digital or leverage on the online platform but hey you and i know that uh, job of man um what they have done yes is to let people understand smes understand that for you to recruit right you have to pass through us which i believe they mm -hmm. have the tools to do what is right but let's come to the local SME who do not have that leverage, who do not have that um, tools to be able to get online, to get people. They recruit based on what their strength level is. Mm. So we will continue to have a situation where SMEs, the large chunks of SMEs, employ people they know or employ people they think they can pay, even mm. when those people might not be able to give in their best. So for me, I think the, link, the, the mission link here is that how do we be able to help the huge sums of the SMEs that are not tech enabled or digitally enabled to be digitally enabled so that they can know that when you want to look for or when you want to recruit, these and these are some of the procedures. 
an institution like Jobberman is one of the best you can go to for them to help you to get the right person. But relatively, SMEs do also um, recruit people that are right because right. they know the portfolios they, they have in their companies and they know the people they want to work with. So yes, it is good for those that are able to use that their, their, their technological platform. It is good that they leverage Jobberman. But the rest, how do we support them? How do we get them enabled so that they can add a bit of tech to their businesses before we can even talk to them of using technological tools to employ all right sheriff we're so grateful there I, I i see you nodding in agreement but you know the issue about creating the available links how do you respond to that yeah so he's right i mean we definitely have a challenge with um you know internet uh, provision in the country not everybody has access to the internet but we do have a, a customer service helpline as well who can we and once you call them and this number is obviously available um, between the hours of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Once you give them a call, they will talk you through the process of how we can, you know, um, register you on our platform. So SMEs do not necessarily have to be connected to the internet mm. to use our service, okay? We have the internet tools. We can just sign you up to our service and help you navigate how to shortlist using our service. So we can, we can, we can take you through all those challenges without you necessarily being connected to the internet. So I hope that, that answers the question. Great, I guess we're so grateful that you joined us. He's CEO of Jobberman, helping us understand the, uh, the how the rights way campaign being initiated to ensure that human resource is at its best for SMEs around the country. Well, that's how we end this edition of The Marketplace. My name is Charles Ayete. For more news, do log on to myjoyonline.com. Enjoy the rest of our programs.